everybody welcome to the last video for this chapter on momentum and impulse we're going to be talking about 2d collisions that are not perfectly inelastic so let's look at this we have a 0.1 kilogram hockey puck traveling five meters per second east collides with another hockey puck of the same mass that is at rest so that's this scenario over here then a collision happens afterward the first puck moves at two meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees what is the speed and direction of the second puck after the collision Okay, so what we're looking for is what we're looking for is the velocity of the second puck after the collision. Whenever we have something moving at an angle like this, it's always it's almost always a good idea to find what the velocity is in the x direction and what the velocity is in the y direction. So let's just quickly do that. I'm gonna just do two times cosine of thirty, and what that's gonna give us is one point seven three meters per second. We see the velocity in the y. Uh, it's going to be one meter per second. Okay, so now we're going to do what we always did. Uh, do conservation momentum. So momentum initial is equal to momentum final. Okay, but what we should know. So this is before the collision, and then this one is after. But what we should know is we should be looking at the x and the y. So let's first do the x direction. So before the collision, we have this 0.1 kilogram hockey puck going five meters per second plus this other hockey puck, which is 0.1, which is not moving, so this is just zero. Now afterwards, this 0.1 hockey puck, the first one, is going 1.73 meters per second in the x direction, and the other 0.1 kilogram hockey puck, we don't know how fast that's going. Uh, so we're gonna do V2 final in the x. And let's find what V2 final in the x is gonna be. So I'm gonna do some math, 0.1 times five, uh, and then minus, 0.1 times 1.73, divide that 0.1, and then we get 3.27 meters per second. So we see in the x direction, it's going 3.27 meters per second. So the second one in the x direction, it is going 3.2 meters per, 3.27 meters per second. Now let's try to find how fast it's going in the y direction. So we're going to do momentum initial in the y is equal to momentum final in the y. So the first one is going 0.1, and even though it's going five meters per second, it's only going to the right. So this is actually going to be just be zero. And the other puck before the collision is not moving. So that's zero. But we should know after the collision, the first puck is going one meter per second upwards. And the second puck is going to be 0.1. And we don't know what that's going to be. So we're going to call this V1, uh, uh, sorry, V2 final in the Y. Uh, even though we don't know what it is, since we know the initial momentum is zero, we should know, and they have the same math. Uh, they're it's, this one's also gonna go one meter per second, but in the opposite direction. Anyway, let's just write it down. 0.1, uh, one plus 0.1, V2 final in the Y. And then let's do a little bit of math. I'll put that to the other side. 0.1 times one divided by 0.1. And we get, again, negative one meters per second, like was predicted. So now we know this is going in the y direction, negative one meters per second. So let's do some Sokotoa to find out the speed and the direction. So I'm gonna do, uh, in order to find the speed, I'm gonna do uh, Sokotoa, I mean not Sokotoa, Pythagorean theorem, 3.27 squared plus uh, one squared, square root of that, and we get 3.42 meters per second. So that's the speed. And let's find this angle here. So I'm going to do tan inverse opposite 1 divided by 3.27. And that should give us an angle. So tan inverse 1 divided by 3.27. And that's going to give us 17 degrees. So I'm going to say at negative 17 degrees because it goes below the uh, angle. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. A steel ball uh, 1 moving at constant speed v on a horizontal friction surface collides obliquely with an identical ball 2 initially at rest. The velocity of the first ball before and after collision is shown on the diagram. What is the approximate direction of the velocity of the second ball after collision? So even if you look at this, it should make sense that uh, it's probably going to be c just by looking at it. And that's the correct answer. But another reason we should know that is because the momentum initial in the y direction for both of these is zero. And after the collision, the momentum in the y direction needs to be zero. So if this is traveling up, the other one has to counterbalance it by also going down. OK, 
Okay, so that's why it has to be going in this downward kind of direction. Okay. All right, I hope that made sense. Uh, last problem that we're going to do with this chapter. All right, let's look at this. Two astronauts are on opposite ends of a spaceship. Astronaut 1 tosses a 0.13 kilogram apple towards astronaut 2 with a speed of 1.11 meters per second. The 0 0.16 kilogram orange is tossed from astronaut 2 to, to astronaut 1 with a speed of 1.21 meters per second. The fruits collide, sending the orange off with a speed of 1.16 meters per second at an angle of 42 degrees south of west. Find the speed and direction of the apple, assuming elastic collision. All right, so let's look at this. We're going to first do momentum initial x is equal to momentum final in the x. Actually, before we do that, let's find, since we know what this velocity is, let's find what the orange's final velocity is in the x direction and final in the y direction. So I'm going to do 1.16 times cosine of 42. And what I get is 0.86. So this is 0.86 meters per second. And then I'm going to do 1.16 times sine of 42. And that's going to be 0 0.78. Oops, 0.78. Okay, knowing that, let's continue. So in the x direction, the apple has a mass of 0.13. Sorry. Okay. So, oh no, I have to find what this is. <laughs> okay, let me do that real quick. Uh, this is point seven, uh, point seven eight, and then the other one, one point one six times cosine of forty two, and we get point eight six. Okay. So what we should know: momentum initial to x equals momentum final to x. So the apple before it collided had a mass of 0.13. It was going 1.11 meters per second. Uh, oops, plus the orange, the orange, which had a mass of 0.16, had an initial velocity before the collision of negative 1.21 because it's going to the left. After they collided, the apple, 0.13, we don't know what the final velocity was of the apple in the x direction. But for the orange, we do know it has a mass of 0.16, and like we found, it is 0.86 meters per second to the left, so negative 0.86. So now let's figure out what the velocity is of the apple. I'm going to call it final velocity of the apple in the x direction. 0.13 times 1.11 times 1.16 plus 0.16 times negative 1.21. Uh, bring the other stuff to the other side. So let's see, plus 0.16 times 0.86. Uh, and then divide that by 0.13. And what we get is 0.68 meters per second. Okay, I hope you guys did the math correctly. But we should know this apple is going in the x direction 0.68 meters per second. Now let's do stuff in the y direction. Momentum initial in the y is equal to momentum final in the y. So the apple at the very beginning it has a mass of 0.13 and it's only going to the right. So the initial velocity is zero. The orange, 0.16, it's only going to the left, so initial velocity in the y is zero. After the collision, the apple, I mean, yeah, the apple, which is 0.13, uh, we don't know what the final velocity is of the apple in the y direction. But we know for the orange, 0.16, and it's going down 0.78, so it's negative 0.78. So let's, figure, let's do a little bit of algebra and find what the final velocity is of the apple, uh, so it's 0.16. 0.78, uh, 0.13, and we get 0.96 meters per second. This is 0.96 meters per second. Now let's do some uh, Pythagorean theorem, 0.96 squared plus 0.68 squared, finding the square root of that, and we get 1.18 meters per second for the apple, and then let's find what the direction is, tan inverse opposite 9.96 divided by 0.68, and this will give us the angle. Uh, so let's see, tan inverse 0.96 divided by 0.68, and this is going to give us 54.69 degrees. 54.69 degrees. And that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching all of this. I hope that made sense, and I hope you learned a lot about momentum and impulse. See you guys next time, I think with electricity or 
angular motion. Depends what you guys are looking at. All right. See you guys.